Hello and welcome back fellow engineers to another Xbox tutorial. As we, in the last episode, made our first little mining rig with this piston drill combo pushing into the ground and making a wonderful borehole which gave us a bunch of materials to process. We also did our little semi-automatic, well just automatically collecting at least, of a little platform here a little collector combo but that still required hand drilling so obviously that the this piston contraption is a, a better option however we need to expand this we need it for we need this thing to be better than it is now so why don't we expand it why don't we make it better the first thing we're going to do is take it apart because we're going to make it slightly bigger now the idea being is that we are going to have it so that we're going to have a number of drills on it and those drills are going to be rotating around with a rotor as well as being pushed into the dirt with the piston and this is probably going to be um, begging for a visit from Clang, which is the community's way of saying that you made your contraption a little too big, a little too greedy, such that it will probably explode the next time you try to move it. So we're going to get our conveyor junction, and I think just a couple more out would probably be all we need. Uh, that, that would make it three. I mean, that's probably fine for now. Just one more out, just to uh, be an example. And then you can make this as big as you want, as long as you are tempting Clang on your own terms. I will not recommend making it <laughs> much bigger, at least on Xbox. Uh, we're going to go back over to Piston. And we'll put a Piston back on the bottom of this. And then, instead of adding the drill which we could, we could just add a drill and punch straight down and get the next block over materials. We're going to instead go over to advanced and we're going to find rotors. Now rotors are the rotationary stuff, but you can see rotor doesn't have any conveyor ports. Advanced rotor does. So make sure this is an advanced rotor that you're slapping down here. Then on the bottom of the advanced rotor, we're going to put on our drills, which should be in weapons and wheels. All right, we got to go over to drill. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one drill, two drill, three drill. And the idea being, I'm almost out of hydrogen as well, is that as we push this down into the ground, using these two pistons this rotor is going to spin these drills around and create a five drill wide considering that one's in the center and it's not going to uh, move but it's going to create a five drill wide borehole all the way down so we're not getting the stuff from three drills we're getting an entire circle of materials so just gotta fill up my hydrogen bottle here I'm slowly starting to run out of ice, which I'll have to go get from the uh, top of the mountain there, but that is fine. And have to uh, quickly fill this up. So it should be quite easy. I already have some resources on me because I ground down a conveyor tube and such preemptively. Well, from the uh, what was set up here before. So I can at least get some of this stuff already pre-made. The rest of it, we can use our build planner to get it onto the base for the base to build up. So, let's see here. Let me get that tube done. And then how can I, can I get the rotor? Yes, I can get the rotor built. So just give me another minute over here and I will get this all built up. And uh, that should be everything all welded up excellent so 
Now, we have our piston facing upwards, our piston facing downwards, and our rotor that is going to spin around our three drills. So what I'm wanting to do here is we're going to go into our control panel and we're going to go to these drills and we're going to turn them all on. So all of our drills are on. I can see that we're shaking a little bit here, which is a little frightening, but we'll just have to cope with that. Now, we have our first piston here. Let's, we're going to start to retract that, but I'm going to set a minimum distance of, say, about four meters. It's just because I know how high the ground is here from what I need. I'm going to start to pull that piston in. And I just want to see where it reaches the ground there. Excellent. So that should be stopping anytime soon. Perfect. Just about what I needed. And now I set the advanced rotor up here to start to rotate ever so slowly. So set it up to say point hmm, what do I want to do? Point three three five ish RPM. Now we can see how point four does. And you can see this is starting to rotate, and now it's getting even more of the dirt being ripped out of the terrain. Excellent. So as I go through this, what I can do is as it makes its rotation, I can go to my piston and I can lower this minimum distance so that it pistons down a little bit further. Keep in mind, every large block here is 2.5 meters. So every time you move down 2.5, that is one block deep. And considering that the drill heads are approximately one block, you can go about to 2.5 meters down each time. Instead of 2.5, I'd recommend maybe around 2. So every time you go around, you could theoretically lower 2.5, uh, 2 to 2.5 meters. Now you'll notice that this is all jiggly. And it's an unfortunate um, byproduct of uh, the Xbox. In on the PC, there is an option. If we go to our uh, control panel here and we look at our pistons and such, on the PC, there's an option called Share Nursa Tensor, which essentially stiffens up all the connections and makes them a lot more static. There's no option for that on Xbox. So, unfortunately, if this was on PC, I'd be advising you to make this like 10 drills wide and make a huge drill rig, but on Xbox, because of this, it's not its not as uh, feasible. So smaller drill rigs, but more of them are probably going to be more, uh, more conducive. But here we are, we're getting another pass, and we're drilling down a little bit further into the ground. Now, do I really want to do this myself? Do I really want to spend all this time going, okay, now it's it's drilled another section, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go to my piston, and I'm going to go to my minimum distance, and I'm going to lower it down another bit, and let the thing drill, and then wait for it to go around, and then do it again. It's, what I want to do is I want to set up a piston drilling, and then I want to go make a sandwich. Right? <laughs> so we're going to do that. Uh, first thing is I have to unlock something here. I have to build a light, wherever they may be, in here. Ah, here we go. Not a spotlight. That's too big. Just a little interior light, which should be just fine. Little interior light. I'll just slap it on the side of the assembler here, as we'll need it for when the base gets dark. And because I built it up, I've unlocked a new components. One of those components being, specifically, if we go over to 
uh, advanced systems is programmable blocks and sensors. Sensors. So we're going to grab sensors and uh, we're going to slap one on the side of the base here. I'm thinking this will work. Now, important with sensors is that you can see that there's two little bits to the sensors. There's that white strip and this sort of bluish area as well. And if I rotate this, we can see that I can rotate it around. We want it so that the white strip is on the bottom. That is the bottom of the sensor. And we're going to place it here on the side of our cargo container. And let's build it up. All right, sensor is all built. So now, what does this mean for our drill rig? Why am I putting a sensor on there? Well, I want to detect whenever this thing makes a rotation and then automatically pull the entire system downwards a bit. So, what I'm going to go in, and we're going to go to our sensor here, and I'm just going to turn these drills off for a moment for noise considerations. Sensor. So, as we discussed previously, we know which way is facing upwards, so these are actually the sensors up, down, bottom, left, and such. What we're going to want to do is have the sensor detect subgrids. So, portions of the grid that it's on, but that are through pistons and rotors and such. So, we want subgrid detection on. So, that way, every time it comes back around, it will detect the drills and it'll say hey I detected a subgrid and I just want that as the only thing it's detecting with that detection of the subgrid we want to set up actions for when it detects something and the two slots there at the bottom are when it detects the thing and when it stops detecting the thing so I'm going to want to go in and go to this piston here and let's name this piston just piston uh, let's see just piston space and whatever we want to call it just test I am bad at naming stuff like this <laughs> but at least now I know which piston it is so when I go into the control panel and I go to that sensor and set up actions, it is very obvious it's piston test. So we're going to add piston test by pressing A. And what we want it to do is we want to decrease the minimum distance because that's what we're doing. We're slowly decreasing the distance whenever it detects something. So we're going to decrease distance whenever we detect the rotors going around. Now we want to make sure that it's going to always detect them even if they're deep down into the ground. So we don't need much of a left-right extent. Those can probably get reduced down. What we need is to make sure the bottom extent is quite long. The top extent, not really. We don't really need that. And we don't need back extent, but we do need a little bit of front extent, and 5 meters is 2 blocks, and that should be enough. So now, whenever this thing rotates around, and I'll just clean that up so it's a nice round number. Give me that 20. Give me that 20. There it is. As this thing comes back around and gets detected, this thing should notice that the drills are within a like a small sliver that is running from this thing all the way down into the ground and then it should automatically reduce this thing's minimum distance and pull the whole rig slightly lower and now we just wait for this thing to get into position taking its sweet time <laughs> but after this thing has fully descended we can do the same thing for this piston 
setting it up instead of this one onto the sensor. So this one will be slowly extending by increasing its maximum distance. And that way we can essentially just let this thing run and it will rotate around. And every time it makes a rotation, it'll automatically detect that it has and will send the piston lower into the ground, mining out more resources. So it should be here very soon. As soon as we enter this area right here, it should change color, make a noise, and yep, there we go. We lower down. Now it's not going to do it again until we go all the way back around. So it's only going to do that much of a lowering each time. So maybe that's not enough. Maybe we should add in so that when it stops detecting as well, which is right now, it's not detecting anymore, we could have it lower as well. But essentially now, this thing is automated. I can just walk away from it. Every time this rotates down, this will suck back in. When that is finished, all depressing, I just need to change the sensor off to this piston instead. And then that piston will fully extend all the way down. And we have an automatic mining setup. Then I just walk off, make a sandwich, come back, and I have a bunch of resources in tow. So, sensor, setup actions. We've got our piston test, which is decreasing our minimum distance. Might as well, at this point, realistically, we could... Yeah, let's, let's do this ourselves. Let's set up the next piston. So we're going to back to that test one. We'll might as well just bring it all the way down to zero. We'll go to our other piston, piston two. We'll set our maximum distance. Because remember, this one is pointing downwards, so we're doing maximums now. Maximum distance to zero. We'll increase our velocity. And then we'll set the sensor to deal with not piston test. We'll clear that off. We'll go piston two, increase maximum distance. And might as well, we'll put two increase maximum distances on there. Yeah, no, can I do that? Ah, well, one of them is fine. So now when this gets back around, it's going to automatically detect the increase in distance, which should be here in just a moment, and then push on deeper into the ground. And you can see, even with a, uh, yep, see, detected it and pushed it on down deeper. Even just with a, uh, a few drills here, we are quite wobbly. So don't want to make things too complicated. But now, that's it. Our little automated drill rig is functioning wonderfully. And uh, we can just let this thing run to mine out a massive quantity of resources for us. Automatically getting transferred into our storage container here and being processed by our refinery. And then when we come back, after going and having a break and leaving this for 20-30 minutes, we have a giant borehole all dug out, and we have a bunch of resources. If you need more, extend this out by a few more blocks and do it again. Or move this over, or change the direction that the air piston's going in and do it to another location. And just keep repeating this process in different locations, and you can mine out the entirety of the world, practically. But that is going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and good hunting out there, fellow space engineers.